This is Mark Kelly of The Roots welcoming you to another math tutorial video by Mr. Witt and Fort Bend Tutoring. FBT, where personalized math tutoring is the solution. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's lesson is going to be about dividing radical expressions and rationalizing. Rationalizing the denominator to be accurate. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to start out with number one. Here, ladies and gentlemen, I have the square root of 6 divided by the square root of 2. As I showed you in our video, Simplifying Square Roots, we can combine these two radical signs if they have something in common. So what I notice is that the 6 and a 2, they have common factors of 2, right? So I can combine these two radicals into 1 and rewrite this as the square root of 6 halves. Mm -hmm. So anytime you have a radical in the numerator and the denominator that have the same index, meaning that they're the same root, this index is 2, this index is 2, they're both square roots. In that case, we can combine these two radicals into 1. Mm -hmm. And so I'm rewriting this as the square root of 6 halves. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 6 divided by 2, knowing that a fraction is a division problem, is 3. So I've reduced this to the square root of 3. That's it. You can't do anything else to this problem. So therefore, I'm going to put a box around it, because that's the answer. That's it. Yeah. So what I did, once again, ladies and gentlemen, is I started out with the square root of 6 divided by the square root of 2. Since they both had the same index and they had a common factor of 2, I went ahead and combined those radicals into 1 and simplified it. That gave us a result of the square root of 3. That was problem number 1. What's up with that? Okay, well, problem number 2. Here I have 6 divided by the square root of 2. But lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, notice that the numerator does not have a radical in the numerator like in the previous problem. Therefore, we will just focus on the denominator here. And you will not be leaving your answers, ladies and gentlemen, in the majority of your math classes with a radical in the denominator. There are some exceptions, but very few. So in order to eradicate that radical in the denominator, in order to get rid of it, we'll do a process called rationalizing. Mm -hmm. That's where we'll be multiplying by 1 in order to rewrite this fraction into an equivalent fraction mm -hmm, with no radical in the denominator. And basically with the square root, you just multiply by that exact same square root over itself. So I'll be multiplying by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And why am I doing this? To get rid of the radical in the denominator. Let's check out how it works. First of all, 6 times the square root of 2 is going to give me a result of 6 square root of 2. And in the denominator, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, ladies and gentlemen, is just 2. Yeah. I mean, technically, you could say it's the square root of 4, but the square root of 4 is a perfect square, and the result of that is 2. So bottom line, anytime you're multiplying the exact same square root sign, what's underneath comes out. Yeah, that's what you wanted to hear. Yeah, you want to hear the shortcut. So square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just 2. If you want to add another step, you can show that it's the square root of 4, then simplify that if you must see it. I just don't regularly do that, so I'm just letting you know. So keep in mind that you're still responsible for simplifying your fractions here, right? So 2 does go into 6 three times evenly, so I'm left with a result of 3 times the square root of 2, and that's my answer, ladies and gentlemen, just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we did was we rationalized the denominator, in other words, we got rid of that radical in the denominator by multiplying the numerator and the denominator times that same square root of 2. That's how we were able to simplify it. All right, there you go. That's problem number 2, ladies and gentlemen. All right, in problem number 3, we're going to always begin the problem by seeing if we can simplify it before we continue with anything else. Well, in this particular problem, I'm noticing that both the 32 and 6 can be reduced by 2. You know, they're both even numbers. So I'm going to simplify it first. I'm going to do that. Okay, so this will end up giving me 16 thirds, just like that. Now I'm noticing that 16 and 3 no longer have anything in common. I can split the radical between the numerator and the denominator. I can rewrite this as the square root of 16 divided by the square root of 3. We know that the square root of 16 is 4. So this is 4 over the square root of 3. Now I have a problem like I did before, and that is I end up with a number over a radical, a square root. So in order to rationalize the denominator, I'll be multiplying the numerator and the denominator by that exact same square root. Okay. So anytime your index is 2, all you'll need to do is multiply by that exact same square root in order to get rid of it and the denominator. All right. So let's multiply straight across, shall we? We end up with 4 times the square root of 3, and as I told you before, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just what's underneath the radical. It'll just be 3. 
And that's it. All right? In slow motion, square root of 3 times square root of 3, ladies and gentlemen, I'll go ahead and show this step this time, is going to be 4 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 9. All right? So that's what you were missing, that step right there. And then I'm taking the square root of 9, which is 3. Mm -hmm. That's it. So you end up with 4 square root of 3 over 3. All right, done and done. Let's put a red box around that because that's the answer. Okay, and now we're moving on to problem number four. In problem number four, we have a negative 3 over the cube root of 54. Now, notice in this particular problem, we have a different index. Instead of it being a square root, instead of the index being 2, we have a cube root. Our index is 3. So we're looking for perfect cubes in order to simplify the radical here. So the largest perfect cube within 54 is 27. So I'm going to rewrite this as the cube root of 27 times 2. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Then from there, I'm going to take the cube root of 27, which is going to be 3. So that'll be 3 times the cube root of what remains, and that's 2. Okay? So this is what I have thus far. Now, I can simplify the 3 in the numerator with the 3 in the denominator here, and I'm going to do just that. So that'll leave a 1 in the numerator over that cube root of 2. So right now, I have negative 1 over the cube root of 2. Now, recall that when we were rationalizing the denominators before, if we had a square root, all we had to do was multiply by the exact same radical. Well, that won't be the case most of the time when you're dealing with a cube root or a different index, okay, other than 2. So what I have underneath the radical here is just 2 to the first power. I don't need two more 2s in order to make this a perfect cube. So what is two more 2s? What's 2 squared? You got it, it's 4. So I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the cube root of 4 in order to make my denominator a perfect cube underneath the radical there. All right? So multiplying straight across, I'll end up with a negative cube root of 4 divided by the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 4. This gives me the cube root of 8. All right, your next thing to do is to simplify the denominator. Remember, your purpose is to get rid of the radical and the denominator. So you don't want to reduce that 4 and 8 right now. You want to simply focus on the denominator and simplify that. So I'm just bringing over this negative cube root of 4 in the numerator. And in the denominator, the cube root of 8 is 2. All right, and that's it. You can't reduce this any further, ladies and gentlemen. This is the answer, okay? So you'll end up with a negative cube root of 4 over 2, done and done. That's it, okay? Let's move on. Let's see what else we got here. In our next problem, we have 5 over 3 minus the square root of 2. So notice in this particular problem, we have a binomial in the denominator. We have two terms, and one of those terms has a square root in it. So we're going to still rationalize the denominator, but we're going to use a different process. It's called the conjugate. And you'll find the conjugate by simply rewriting these two terms here, except you'll change the sign on that second term. Instead of it being a negative square root of 2, you'll write it as a positive square root of 2. So you'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by that. So this will be 3 plus the square root of 2 over 3 plus the square root of 2. Remember, anything over itself is 1. So we're just simply changing the way it looks, ladies and gentlemen. We're not changing the value at all. So we'll need to distribute now. So 5 times 3 gives me 15. 5 times the square root of 2 is going to be a positive 5 square root of 2. That's my numerator. In the denominator, I have two binomials. So that's right. I'll need to distribute that out. I need to foil it out. So if you need practice on this, ladies and gentlemen, you can check out our multiplying polynomials, or you can even check out our multiplying binomials to make sure you have this process down. I'm going to start by multiplying 3 times 3, which gives me 9. 3 times square root of 2 is going to be a positive 3 square root of 2. I'll then be multiplying a negative square root of 2 times 3. This gives me a negative 3 square root of 2. And then I'll finally be multiplying a a negative square root of 2 times a positive square root of 2, and a negative times a positive is a negative, and square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just 2. All right, so keep that in mind, right? What happens here is your middle terms in the denominator will cancel out. That's right, they were additive inverses, opposites, so they cancel. Then, bringing down the numerator, that 15 plus 5 times the square root of 2, that'll be over the result of 9 minus 2, which is 7. Yeah. And that's the answer. You can't do anything else to this problem. That's it. Yeah, I see what you're saying. In the numerator, you can factor out a 5. And then what's going to happen with that? That's right. It's not going to go anywhere. So you can leave it just like that, ladies and gentlemen. All right? Stop fussing with me. There you go. Continue on. Next problem. In problem number 6, 
we have this gem. We have the square root of 7 minus the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 7 plus the square root of 2. Our focus is getting rid of the radicals in the denominator. So I'll be multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator. You got it. So what is that denominator's conjugate? It's going to be the square root of 7 minus the square root of 2. Mm -hmm. Remember, to find the conjugate, you only need to change the sign on that last term there. So everything else will stay the same. The terms look the same, except that the sign of the second term is the opposite every time. In our numerators, we're multiplying binomials. All right. So in the denominators, same thing. We're multiplying binomials here. So keep either the FOIL method or the distributive method at the ready, because you'll need it. The square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is just 7. The square root of 7 times a negative square root of 2 is going to be a negative square root of 14. Since they have the exact same index, ladies and gentlemen, all you have to do is multiply the numbers underneath the radicals together to get that square root of 14. A negative square root of 2 times square root of 7 is a negative square root of 14. And finally, a negative square root of 2 times a negative square root of 2 gives you a positive 2. All right. All of that is the numerator thus far. In the denominator, I'll be multiplying square root of 7 times square root of 7, which is 7. Square root of 7 times negative square root of 2 is a negative square root of 14. Multiplying square root of 2 times square root of 7, that gives me a positive square root of 14. And then I have a positive square root of 2 times a negative square root of 2, that gives me a negative 2. From here, we want to simplify what we can. For one, I know in the denominator here, those middle terms will cancel out altogether. In the numerator, that's not going to be the case. So I'm going to start out by adding the 7 and the 2 together. That gives me 9. And a negative square root of 14 and a negative square root of 14 gives me negative 2 square root of 14. Just like that. I can't simplify that 14 any further because none of the factors of 14 are perfect squares other than 1. It needs to be a number higher than 1 for me to simplify it. Then, in the denominator, 7 minus 2 is always 5. And that's it. These three parts of our fraction here, this rational expression, don't have anything in common other than 1. So I can't reduce it any further. So this is going to be my answer, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. That's probably number 6. Yeah. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes problem number six and our lesson for today on dividing radical expressions and rationalizing the denominator. Okay, so as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching and please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you find yourself on Facebook or Twitter, look us up, okay, for pen tutoring. See you out there. Peace. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Like our Facebook page. Fort Bend Tutoring and visit us on the web at www.tutormemath.net.